Hi everyone, my name is Rudra Sekri and welcome to the Astropods. Today we have someone on the show who loves to share their passion for the for the night sky with his community through astrophotography and joined us on the podcast to inspire you to potentially get involved in astrophotography. This talented person from Canada believes that technology is available at our fingertips and with enough time and dedication, even you can become an astrophotographer. However, due to pressing issues in astronomy such as light pollution, he is concerned that our view of the night sky will never be the same. It is my utmost pleasure and excitement to introduce Craig to the Astropods. Thank you so much for joining with us, Craig. Oh, thanks for the great introduction, Rudra. It was uh, my pleasure to come on the podcast and share some of my views when it comes to uh, you know astrophotography and um, the hobby in general. Thank you so much, Craig. Uh, it's really interesting to hear your perspective on you know the time cost and potentially hours worth of dedication required to be one of the what we call the top dogs in astrophotography you know obviously most people won't want to be uh, a top dog they probably just want to be probably just want to do it as a hobby just like you um as a hobbyist astrophotographer we've got uh we've got plenty of time and we will see prices of technology uh drop down over the next few years now the final question is uh, a question which um i'm sure you've received from many beginner astrophotographers and that question is, are there any online or offline resources which you could recommend to beginners um, as to how they can get involved in astrophotography? Yeah, for sure. I, uh, well, to start with, I don't, you know, I don't consider myself a, a super advanced astrophotographer by any means. There's, there's many guys out there that are much better than me and, and I'm still learning, you know, every time I have, I'm out under the stars, I'm learning different things and, learning new techniques and in, in processing uh, the images I take and and in doing so it helps to you know have that online community that you can refer to and you can ask questions to and and I do it constantly I think uh, most people do you know uh, cloudy nights is kind of a, a mainstay in the in the circle it, uh, there's a lot of people that, that go there it's just a it's a forum and it's awesome there's so much information on there and years and years of information and and in general, the people are very helpful and, uh, you know, it's a great resource. Um, YouTube is obviously another one that's really good. There's some really good uh, people on YouTube that are, you know, dedicated a ton of time to just helping people learn the different techniques, um, talk about, you know, a lot of the things that we just talked about uh, today. So Twitter, Twitter's a little different. It's not really a great medium. I don't find personally for, uh, you know, learning the stuff. It's it's great for awareness, like news and, and updates and, and that kind of thing. I, I think it's really good for, but as a learning resource, uh, I find YouTube and, uh, you know, online forums such, such as cloudy nights. Uh, and there's a few others. I think, uh, is it ice in space or something is one I, I believe is Australian. Um, so I, and obviously Google kind of spreads across all of them. So, and yeah, I don't know. I, they're, they're kind of the, the go-tos anyway, I think for most people, really it, it comes down to, uh, I, I guess uh, I should also mention the, the manufacturers of some of these, uh, the equipment. So there's some of these different, um, equipment manufacturers or processing suite manufacturers have their own internal forms and message boards and, and that kind of thing where you can, you can ask questions and get, you know, direct answers from, um, uh, from the people that design and support their equipment. Uh, you know, I use a software BISC uh, equipment mount. So, I mean, the, their form is, is valuable. It's got lots of information, in it, but it's specific to that specific thing. So, uh, yeah, I would say there's, there's no shortage of information out there. It's just uh, the time it takes to kind of, you know, look up uh, your problem or ask the question and, and wait for responses and that sort of thing. Uh, the good thing about it is, again, internet slash technology has made all this so much easier. I mean, years ago, you it would be very difficult to do this type of stuff without having like some sort of mentor showing you or something, right? Uh, it, it's it's neat uh, the the amount that you can participate now without actually even knowing anyone doing the hobby. 
it's really interesting to see how much astrophotography has evolved over the past few years and past few decades, actually. Do you have any other advice that you would like to uh, recommend to beginners just so that they can have like a little jump start into their journey on astro journey through astrophotography? The main thing is to spend some time out under the stars. Um, I think that's where, you know, that that's where it all begins. If you uh, sort of develop that personal relationship with with the objects in the night sky, that's that's key because that's what keeps bringing you back. Uh, understanding uh, what it is you're looking at uh, makes a huge difference. I mean, you can look at pretty pictures of deep sky objects, but if you don't know what they are, you don't kind of get that same uh, connection to that to that picture. So, but once you start understanding how the size and and the the aspects of what it is you're looking at like you know for example that galaxy that's uh, 25 million light years away from us i mean even that it sounds sounds far but and you know maybe once you start looking into how far is a light year you know and then once you understand that there's some really good you know videos out there that put it in perspective and then you go 25 million light years and then you go well, how big is the galaxy and how many stars and and it's just like, you know, it, it, it never ends. And I think it leads to, at least for me, it, it led to reading books by like Stephen Hawking. I've read, uh, you know, A Brief History of Time. Like I never was really interested in anything like that before that, you know, time I looked at Saturn through a telescope. <laughs> so it's just a, you know, it's a, a bit of a life journey, I guess. And um, it's valuable. It, it keeps you grounded as a as a person. It um, and it kind of helps you get through, you know, times that may be rougher, or uh, you know, appreciate the good times a little bit better too. And uh, once you kind of have a different perspective on things, yeah, totally. Do you have any book recommendations that you might re might be able to recommend to people, just in general, about astronomy, astrophotography, astrophysics, any anything? Yeah, as far as uh, actual, you know, books and, and offline sort of resources, uh, I would definitely recommend the, the Backyard Astronomer's Guide. It's uh, it's a really good and it's updated frequently to kind of keep up with the times. It's uh, it's almost invaluable. And another one that, you know, Turn Left at Orion, it's a, it's a good book for people that maybe don't even have a telescope because it kind of shows you what what to expect when you look at an object through the telescope. It kind of has all the different objects and what they sort of look like through the eyepieces. And, and then you can kind of decide if it's something that, you know, that interests you on what you might see. Because uh, astrophotography can be a little misleading because what happens is people see all these like crazy photos of nebulas and, uh, and different like dust clouds. And, and they ex then they go by a telescope and they, they look at it and they expect to see that, but that's not how it works. Cause uh, you know, these, these objects are so far away and they're so dim that uh, the, the lights all stretched out by the time it hits your eye and your, our eyes just aren't designed to, um, to see that, that level of detail or, or, or be able to um, differentiate a lot of the, the different spectrums of, of light. So you have to use a, a CCD or, or a, a CMOS camera that can sort of take what it captures and then you can kind of run it through different processes and pull out all the detail and, and sort of you know make your image come to life so so you got to, that's one thing that sort of beginners kind of get maybe discouraged about is when they realize that they can't just look through the telescope and see that really awesome picture there is some advancements in sort of the video astronomy where essentially you're using um, high frame rates and, and it's a stacking those images in sort of real time and you can kind of this displays it as a video uh, and, and you kind of get a mix of both worlds so it's better than just sort of a better image and just the eyepiece but it's not as good as like a um, processed app image with a dedicated camera type thing so uh, they're, they're good for like outreach or, or that kind of thing where you're trying to show a lot of people or just uh, new people you know what you can see through a telescope and, and there's very 
and that's one area where technology is just getting better and better too, because that's a fairly new thing. Those books, I think, are good good starting points anyway. It really uh, for those that like, you know, prefer to read and uh, as opposed to watch YouTube videos, which you know I think there's benefit in in both mediums. Well, thank you so much, Craig. Um, it's really it's really fascinating to hear all your answers and all your thoughts and perspective. Pers- perspectives on some of the stuff which we which we've been looking at today thank you so much for uh joining us once again on the astropods and uh if you do want to follow craig just uh uh just look just uh click on the links which we have in our description down below which take you which take you to his instagram twitter uh instagram and twitter pages but then also he's got his own website which you can check out as well and check out some of the cool photos he's been creating over the past few years. Thank you so much for joining, Craig. Any final thoughts? No, I thank you for so much for having me on the podcast. I, I enjoy talking about my experiences uh, and it definitely follow me on uh, online. Uh, Elusive Photons is, is where you can find me. I, you know, it's just a neat name I come up with years ago. I, th- I thought it was kind of uh, uh, fitting anyway. Um, it's not easy to catch the photons that we're trying to collect. <laughs> um, that is so true. No, yeah. Thank you so much, Craig. Um, make sure to subscribe to the Astro Pods because we will be having uh, more people just like Craig uh, joining our podcast to share their expertise, expertise in their respective fields of astronomy. And have a great day. <laughs>